Trent Reznor is awesome. The mastermind of Nine Inch Nails has proven this over the years. Whether it's through live performances, legendary albums, standing up for the fans, or refusing to stay in one lane and coast, the worlds of rock, metal, alternative, and music in general are better for his contributions. There are many examples, and this video looks at 10 reasons why Trent Reznor is awesome. This is not a deep biographical dive going into invasive details, and it's also not going to cover every musical contribution the man has ever made because the video would be 10 hours long. It's just a a list of reasons why Trent Reznor is awesome. Starting off more broadly, I feel it important to point out that Trent Reznor helped popularize industrial music to the masses. In the late 80s and early 90s, the industrial genre was still not as well known as it is today, but thanks to efforts from names like Nine Inch Nails and Ministry, industrial music caught attention. I feel it was Nine Inch Nails that truly elevated a form of counterculture with industrial music in the public eye. Trent was definitely not the first to start incorporating heavy digital instruments and effects, and it was not the trend in rock and metal either. Alternative music was turning into something entirely new, and it was becoming loose with the definitions. Reznor added to that. Hair metal and grunge, and then industrial coming in from the underground with Trent Reznor singing about brutality and carnal urges. That's very on brand for the man and a great way to describe how Nine Inch Nails music swoops in and sticks with you. Some of the best musicians over the years are not handed big contracts with guaranteed studio time at a young age due to gimmicks or looks or industry favors, but they're earned by their work. Trent Reznor Reznor earned his original studio time the very old-fashioned way of working for it. His first recordings were done after hours at the studio he works for. While working as a studio handyman after college, Reznor did such a good job keeping the place ship shape that he was allowed full access to studio recording sessions at Right Track in Cleveland after hours. The studio owner, Bert Koster, was fine with it, and it didn't cost him anything to let him play around. The result was Reznor learning how to use studio equipment, practicing his singing, and making Pretty Hate Machine. Trent recorded everything himself over time and was able to get the debut of Nine Inch Nails to the public and cheaply due in part to his hard work buffing floors and fixing lights. That goes into the next great quality of the man as Trent Reznor is a true multi-instrumentalist. Guitar, piano, drums, bass, saxophone, you name it, he can play it and then turn it into an electronically chaotic masterpiece. A man with that much range with so many instruments is rare and should be appreciated. It's not just that he plays everything but also how he he plays them, working with effects, distortion, recording everything and processing that into more digital effects and then playing those again and doing it repeatedly to make something wildly different. Just like people who speak more than one language think and analyze differently, I feel it's the same for people who know more than one instrument. That means Trent Reznor is clearly a genius. He played saxophone and piano in high school for band and he kept picking up instruments in anger as he got older. Trent was doing it with ease while also doing drama. He was Judas in his high school's performance of Jesus Christ Superstar. That is a Adorable. From adorable to admirable, one thing that Reznor has always been open about is his former demons and how hard it was to struggle through everything, but he always held himself accountable. He still does many years into sobriety as well. Reznor went through the downward spiral, but was able to come back up. It was after several attempts at getting sober, getting some insight from David Bowie, and then entering rehab in 2001 that Reznor was able to kick the habit. Rehab definitely was not easy for the man. As Reznor said, it was the hardest thing he'd ever done, but the benefits were worth it. Going through the shame for his actions and the opportunities he lost during those years was cathartic for him, and he's made sure to own up to everything. Think about that time frame in the 90s and how much music we would not have gotten from Trent Reznor if he continued down that path. It's staggering. It's great that he was able to face himself in his actions. One of the more underrated acts, in my opinion, over the past few years is How to Destroy Angels, and what's terrible is that many don't know that Trent Reznor is part of it. Trent stepping back from vocals and allowing his wife Mary Queen to show his impressive sound is proof of Reznor showing he knows how to produce and arrange in another group from a different position. Nine Inch Nails will always be excellent, but it's worth looking up other groups Trent has been a part of, especially How to Destroy Angels. It was a running side project in the early 2010s with EPs and music getting added to soundtracks until Welcome Oblivion came out and that album still holds up. You can go into the other many collaborations he's done with artists like Ozzy Osbourne, Dave Grohl, Maynard James Keenan, Tori Amos, Halsey, John Baptiste, 
There are tons. There are way too many to name. It's impossible. Nine Inch Nails, Welcome to Oblivion, and many other projects in his massive career. There have been many musicians in heavy music that have called out record labels in the recording industry at one point or another. Trent Reznor has definitely made direct shots, and deservedly so. Not only that, but he's done it over many years and truly stood up to his own label and music associations just to make sure the wrongdoing is called out specifically. One big example is his experience with the Grammys. Reznor's won several Grammy Awards for Best Metal Performance with Nine Inch Nails, but also won Grammys for Soundtrack Works. In his own words, why don't the Grammys matter? Because it feels rigged and cheap, like a popularity contest that the Insiders Club has decided. Another example is him calling out his own label for overcharging the consumers in Australia. Years ago, he called out Universal live in concert for making fans pay almost double for a Nine Inch Nails album what was priced in the United States. His statement? My record label all around the world hates me because I yelled at them. I called them out for being greedy. Has anyone seen the price come down? Okay, well you know what that means. Steal it. Steal away. Steal and steal and steal some more and give it to all your friends and keep on stealing. One of the best cover songs of all time was originally created by Trent Reznor about his struggles and demons. When Johnny Cash took his turn, it changed the meaning and tone of the famous song Hurts. Originally, Trent felt awkward about it, but he then came around big time and loved what Cash made. When Reznor was first sent the Cash demo, he said, I listened to it and it was very strange. It was this other person inhabiting my most personal song. Hearing it was like someone kissing your girlfriend. It felt invasive. It did not take him long to turn around on Johnny Cash's take. Shortly after saying, having Johnny Cash, one of the greatest singer-songwriters of all time, want to cover your song, that's something that matters to me. It's not so much what other people think, but the honor that this guy felt it was worthy of interpreting. He would then go on to say that Hurt was Cash's song. That's a massive amount of respect and willingness to allow work to be used. We got Cash's last great hit because of it. It's important to dedicate some time to how successful Trent Reznor has been with scoring movies and becoming a film composer because, wow, he puts other Hollywood professionals to shame. Academy Awards, Emmys, Golden Globes, Grammys, all won for his film soundtracks, and he's earned each one. Most recently, Soul, along with Atticus Ross and John Batiste, which proves he can work with Pixar. Years before that was The Social Network, where Reznor and Ross first started winning awards for scoring films in a unique way. Those two are the most well-known, but that's not the only movies they've been a part of. There's Gone Girl from 2014, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo in 2011, Bird Box in 2018. I'm not even scratching the surface. However many movies you think Trent Reznor has helped score, you are probably a bit short as his filmography is huge. It doesn't stop with movies either. Trent Reznor's work with video game soundtracks was iconic in the 90s. I understand that Nine Inch Nails music has been used in many standard soundtracks over the decades, but I'm referring to when Trent Reznor created whole soundtracks by himself, most importantly referring to Quake. This was the game changer. Before Quake, it was a rare thing that a big name musician would spend time creating music for a video game, as the musician's work for creating it would not be recognized with the artist or band's name, especially in the 90s. That did not matter to Trent Reznor, and he dived head first into this project. It was a match made in heaven. The industrial and digitized music fit perfectly for a first person shooter on PC in the mid 90s, especially through those rough PC speakers, and it still sounded awesome. I, for one, would love to hear Trent Reznor go back to video game composing again. Any game. Doesn't have to be a first person shooter. Have him score the next Final Fantasy game. Who cares? It'd be great. Finally, this one refers back a little to his standing up to the music industry, where he understands fans and consumers in general can get ripped off. Someone with his high of stature is able to put up a fight, but it's not to his own benefit. It's because he cares about the fans he has earned and understands that many deserve to hear the music they want. He's gone out of his way and out of his own pocket to do so. There are few major mainstream, highly successful musicians who continuously put new music online for free. There are even fewer who have been doing so for many years. You can go back to the Fantastic Ghosts album, including Five and Six, which came out as recent as 2020, as well as the other Nine Inch Nails albums that were free to download download from the band's website during the 2000s. The Nine Inch Nails live shows are a spectacle, and they play all the hits and deep cuts that they can cram into one set. Reznor has also encouraged fan films about the band himself, and has allowed his own music to be a part of it. Nine Inch Nails fans, Trent Reznor fans, they never know what to expect next, but they keep coming back, and Reznor understands the fans will stick by him and wait patiently. They know he will continue to create. It's the best type of fan relationship when you know you 
you can trust the creator as a fan to make something, and the creator can trust the fans to keep coming back for more. And those are just 10 reasons why Trent Reznor is awesome. What do you like about him? Leave a comment, let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons, and a special thanks to Chris Stoneman and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. Please click the link in the video description for more info. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified on upcoming videos, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I'm up for suggestions on who should be on the next video for who people think is awesome. Leave a comment if you have a good choice.